working with data and the microservices architecture would be really challenging. Let's take the use case of microservice A who wants to get data from microservice B. We would have four different approaches to solve this problem. The easiest one is to have the direct HTTP request from A to B. Or we can use the API gateway to aggregate this request. We can also create another aggregator microservice who will have the implementation for that uh, data aggregation. And then we have an option number four, which is creating copies of the data. So we'll have one system of records, then we'll have another copy of the data called the materialized view. I'm Hossam Delay. Follow me in this Lightboard session to explore those four approaches and discuss what are the advantages and the disadvantages for each one of them. In a typical microservice architecture, we have the web apps and the mobile apps who wants to connect to our application. So here, for example, let's say we have a mobile application or a web app, and we have also a mobile app that wants to connect to our microservices. They will connect to the microservices through an API gateway. So all their requests will go through the API gateway. The API gateway then will take those uh, uh, requests and it will uh, proxy them or it will um, uh, re forward them into the microservices because API gateway have access to all of my the microservices in my system. It have access to the microservice one for the product catalog, for example. So I add that here. Let's say this is the catalog microservice. And maybe I have a second microservice, which is the uh, basket microservice, for example. Each microservice will have or will own its own data. So a catalog microservice might have access to something like a SQL uh, database, for example. And microservice B or the basket microservice would have access to another different uh, database. This could be something like a SQL uh, or NoSQL, for example. So this is the typical architecture for a microservice uh, application. Now let's take a look at one of the uh, use cases right here. So uh, let's say now um, from my web app or the mobile app, I have a user who have um, seen what I have in the catalog. So he issued a get HTTP request to get all the products from the catalog. Those products will be retrieved from the SQL uh, database where we ha I have all the details about uh, the products. Then he choose one product and click add to the basket. This will create a post request and this, uh, uh, at this level. And that would be handled by the API uh, gateway. And that HTTP post request the API gateway will s will get the uh, ID or the product ID of the chosen product to be added to the basket and it will pass it through the, a uh, the HTTP post. So here we'll have as parameter the ID of that product. Then at the level of the basket microservice, it will retrieve that or it will get that um, HTTP post and the ID of the product and then it will try to save the uh, that product in its local uh, database but here it have only the id of the product and then and uh, the basket microservice needs more information about the product like the name of the product the price and so on and as we said it's the only uh, the only microservice who owns that data is the pr catalog microservice so here for the basket microservice to get that data from another microservice, we have four options available for us. Let's explore those different uh, options. So first option, which is the uh, most, uh, the easiest option is that to have a microservice B or the basket 
can create a direct HTTP request to the microservice that owns that data, which is catalog in our case. And this is the most easiest option, but the only drawback of this uh, approach is that now we are creating coupling between our different microservices because with this approach, my basket microservice needs to know about the catalog uh, microservice. And each time I, need, I change that uh, uh, exposed web service and the catalog, I, I need to update the uh, basket. So coupling is not good in the microservice uh, uh, architectures. Instead, here we have another approach, which is using this API gateway we got here. So what's if we can use that API gateway to create and aggregate those requests? So that API gateway, when, uh, when it will get uh, a request to add a product to the basket, it will create a first request to the uh, catalog microservice. It will retrieve that data through a GET request, then it will post that uh, data to, to the uh, basket microservice. And this, now we, we don't have the coupling or the direct communication between the different microservices because this will be handled by the API gateway. But with this approach, now if we have uh, lots of uh, uh, of requests that would uh, go across multiple microservices then here would have all of those requests created in the API gateway and that adds lots of responsibility and lots of intelligence to the API gateway. So we are creating lots of um, dependencies and to the API gateway. So we want we don't want to do that. For that we can uh, have an approach number three which is here we'll be keeping using the api gateway and the api gateway will still connect to the uh, catalog and the uh, basket microservice but with only one difference here is that now Instead of having the API gateway handling those type of uh, requests where we need uh, to aggregate data, this will be handled by another aggregator, microservice aggregator. So it's another microservice that its own responsibility is to um, is to handle those type of requests. So I create an aggregator microservice for uh, adding a product to the basket and if I have another request like that I need to create another aggregator microservice so the aggregator microservice would have access of course to the catalog and to the basket uh, microservices in order to uh, get that data and add it to the basket so we have invented those uh, three approaches in order to uh, to keep data owned only by its uh, microservice and in order to not have duplicated data. But it turns out that actually duplicating data could be a good solution in this case, if of course manage it correctly. So let's explore this option right here. At first, the um, catalog microservice, its database owns the data right here. So imagine we have a table here, which have this uh, schema. So it's um, a table that have multiple columns. First column is the ID of the product. Then a second column might be the name of the product. And a third column might be the uh, price for that product. And maybe another fourth column for other, uh, for other data. And let's imagine that we have here a product with ID equal to 1, name uh, P1, any name right here, price equal to uh, 20, and some other uh, data. The basket microservice, in order to add that, uh, in order to add that item to its uh, database, so here let's call that event add item, 
In order to add that event to its own database, it needs the name and the price for the uh, uh, for the product. So what would what we would have here is to create a local copy of this database into the basket microservice. So in this case, we'll have another uh, another table right here or another database that will hold that uh, data. So let's see, we'll have another table right here with uh, columns ID, columns name, and columns price. Here we have the minimum data required by the microservice. Okay, if we only require those three columns, we only put those three columns, not the additional ones. So it's a small copy of that database, and of course this table could be also um, uh, joined by other data coming from other microservices. This table will be would be called the materialized view. This uh, is the name of this approach. because this is a view uh, table if we are using the uh, SQL databases. And uh, this table would be actually available for read only. Why? If this means if any change happens uh, for the product price, then we won't, um, we won't reflect or we won't change it directly from in this table, but we should that should be changed inside this table right here. This table should be is the one that should be considered as the uh, system of record. It's the table. It's the table that holds the uh, real uh, values for the uh, database. That data would be copied to this table right here when we deploy this uh, those microservices. So let's imagine that here we have an operation to copy this data right here. This could be copied manually at first because it, would, it will be uh, 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 run it only once. So copy operation right here to have that same amount data available here. This means in here we have this product with ID 1, with name P1, and with price equal to 20. And my, micro my basket microservice will be able to, uh, to access this uh, data right here. So when it gets that HTTP POST request to add an item to the basket, it will get the product ID, it will look for that product ID now, not in this m uh, catalog microservice, but to look for that product in its own uh, materialized uh, view uh, table right here. So this means we don't need to have cross uh, uh, calls to different microservices, no more HTTP requests, and this means uh, the performance of the application will be uh, will be better because we we retrieve the data from the local database, not from another microservices database. But one challenge that will arise here in this case: what if, for example, for any reason, the price of the product with ID 1 would change from 20 to 25, for example. In this copy right here, we still have 20, and this value should be changed, it sh should be updated. So here we have a mechanism to, or an approach to, uh, to, to have, uh, to update the data right here, and that could be done through data uh, synchronization. So here we need to synchronize the data. Of course, we won't create a direct connection between the different databases, but that synchronization for the data would be done through the microservice catalog. Because if I want to access some other uh, um, data that belongs to another microservice, I need to do that at the microservice level, not uh, databases from different microservices talking to each other. So those are just logic uh, uh, connections right here. So how that would be done? So first of all, the catalog microservice who will be responsible for that change. When that change happens, it needs to create an event. So it should use the uh, event-driven design pattern right here. So it will create an event 
call it price changed event. This event will go to live inside a queue. And when the, once the basket microservice is available, it will go to process that uh, um, it will go to process that event right here. So here, let's imagine the basket microservice. We have a handler for that. The role of the handler is to read information coming from the event, which will contain the uh, ID of the product and the new price, for example. Then it will. Uh, in this implementation, the handler method, what it's going to do is that it will go to connect to the table. It will look for the product with ID 1, and then it will update the price to go from the old price 20 to use the new uh, price, which is 25. So with this way, we could synchronize the data between the different uh, microservices databases through using the event-driven uh, design pattern. Of course, this approach right here has also its own uh, uh, challenges because now if the data changes in one uh, uh, table right here in the system of record, and that change was not reflected yet on the read-only because it passes through a queue and this will add some bit of uh, latency and before synchronizing that data and let's imagine between those two operations we have a user who have added a product to the basket and added that product to uh, or ordered that product so this means he will um, purchase that product with the old price here we need sometimes we need to make the or to have uh, the will have the trade-off between having uh, consistency uh, of the data or having better uh, performance for our application. I hope you liked this presentation about working with data in the microservices uh, architecture. If you are looking for more of those videos, please follow me on uh, YouTube, go to subscribe and subscribe to the new notifications and follow me also on um, Twitter. Here is my Twitter handler at Hossam Delay. Thank you and see you in other Lightboard sessions. Bye-bye.